So let's take a look at our Corona tale of the tape. Corona who invites you to find your beach. Bartholomew, four years older than Ramirez, as Bartholomew has the height and the reach advantage. Once again, it is Cuba against Mexico here tonight in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Cannery Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, Premier Boxing Champions now features the main event. Live on FS1, 10 rounds in the featherweight division. The three judges ringside are Tim Cheatham, Patricia Morse Jarman, and Ricardo Ocasio. And the referee in charge, when the bell sounds, Jay Nady. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner, he comes in wearing the black with the silver trim. His professional record stands at 20 wins, no losses, two draws, seven wins coming by way of knockout. From Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, presentando, presenting the undefeated El Invicto, Eduardo Cerdo. Ramirez. And across the ring, his adversary fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the red, white, and the blue, the colors of Cuba. As a professional, he is undefeated. 13 wins, seven of those coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Havana, Cuba. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Led one, El Problema Bartholomew. Led one, Bartholomew, 13 and 0. Having come off a win back on March 28th, the ninth round, TKO over Reynaldo Blanco. His brother Rancis is a two division world champion. Eduardo Cerdo Ramirez from Los Mochis in Mexico. Former in the hometown of Jorge Ace, Fernando Montiel, Humberto Soto, Hugo Caceres, trying to live up to that championship lineage. Both fighters are Southpaw, which is uh, somewhat, we don't see that often, and Bartholomew starting strong. A straight left hand down the middle to the body of Ramirez. Bartholomew's trying to stage his presence in the ring. Take that ring gentleman behind that jab. He's doing a good job doing it. Juan Bartholomew says he looks up to his brother, Francis and Jan. Jan won a gold medal in 2004 at the Olympic Games in Athens. Yeah, all those Cuban fighters that come out of that Cuban program. They come game, ready to go, prime, almost like they're professionals already. Bartholomew fighting here in his adopted hometown of Las Vegas. It means quite a bit to him to fight in front of his family and friends and his supporters. You know, and I, know I like how Bartholomew was starting off. You know, he was just touching that jab and then going down to the body with the jab. And when he sees an opening, he comes with a power shot like that. You know, I feel if he keeps fighting this way, this, this is going to be early on for looks to be warmed up and he's looking extremely fast and crisp and is beating Ramirez to the punch. See Ramirez is starting to get into that body, trying to pick into the, get on the inside and pick that shot to the body to slow him down a bit. You know, I feel like um, uh, Ramirez is going to have to use a lot of head movement this fight, you know, just to maybe to get in. Because uh, Bartholomew is of course a taller fighter and he's using the jab really good to keep him out. So he's going to have to use a lot of head movement to get in. Yeah, he's using a nice long jab too. Not just a jab, but it's long, so he's able to set up that body shot, that left hand to the body and also to the head. Bartholomew told us in his last fight against Reynaldo Blanco, he hurt his hand because he went ahead and he hit a shot. He hit Blanco on the top of his head and then injured his hand, but thankfully he is okay. He had to fight several rounds with just one hand, but still, he got the stoppage over the rocket, Reynaldo Blanco. Yeah, coming in. He's doing some nice jabs. Ramirez went lunging in with a power shot. He missed, and Bartholomew made him pay. Right hook to the body. 
body by the 28-year-old. That was actually fighting good, coming forward, being the taller guy, working behind that jab. Welcome back to PBC on FS1. Ismail Salas in the corner of Latuan Bartholomew. Robert, talk us through the keys to victory for Bartholomew. Bartholomew needs to use that jab, stick it solid, stepping in to the inside, landing those body shots. He's doing a nice job of it already, of landing those, those body shots. He's doing a tremendous job of that attack. He's already showcasing that, at least through the first round here at the Cannery Hotel and Casino. Ray Flores, Robert Guerrero, David Benavides, Jordan Hardy, ringside. Our main event, this one in the featherweight division. Featherweights also will be on display on October 14th, PBC on Fox. Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Mata's in separate matchups at the StubHub Center in Carson, California. Cannot wait to get to Carson in a few weeks' time. It's going to be a barn burner. And so far, we've had some barn burners here on Toe to Toe Tuesdays. Ledwan Bartholomew fighting in front of his brother, Rancis. Yeah, Bartholomew also has Joel Casamayor, Olympic gold medalist in 1992, which has a lot of experiments. He was actually voted best fighter over Oscar De La Hoya in the Olympics. So, you know, he's learning a lot also having him in the corner. I personally, myself, trained under uh, Casamayar, learned a lot of stuff from him early in my career, taught me a lot in the ring, and I think that's what he's uh, showcasing today also. Yeah, they have so much great fighters to work with. Uh, you know, they work with his, uh, his brother, and they also have Jorge Linares to work with. You know, they work with Joel Casamayar, so there's a lot of great thinking that goes into that boxing gym. You know, you could obviously tell right now, you know, Bartholomew looks really composed, and he's his jab really good, you know, and he's he's really imposing as well. I mean, he's doing whatever he wants. A straight left that connected for Eduardo Ramirez, and Ramirez is trying to cut off the ring on Bartholomew, and also another name that trains under Ismael Salas is your Dennis Ugas. Ugas is making a ton of weight in the welterweight division. We have seen Ugas fight many times on PBC, on FS1, on toe-to-toe -to -toe Tuesdays, and looking forward to seeing what is next for Ugas. Ugas has won five in a row. For Ramirez, he trains under the guidance of Manuel Montiel, and that last name Montiel stands out because he is the brother of five-time world champion Fernando Montiel, who incidentally happens to be from Los Mochis as well. Yeah, he comes out of a good camp. You know, he's very composed in there also. You know, he's starting to put that pressure. He's starting to dig to the body where, you know, he's starting to be effective in there. Stop! And Ramirez, he's 3-0 in his career when facing fellow undefeated fighters. Ledouan is the fourth one that he's inside the ring with. What I like what America is doing is every time Bethany steps out, he fires a shot and lands almost every time right on the bone. Get that overhand ball. And David Ramirez has been more successful and now almost a clash of heads there. And Jay Nady is looking to see if there is a laceration but thankfully, no cut whatsoever. Closing moments of round two. Right hook to the body by Bartholomew to end the second round. Ramirez stares him down as he goes to the corner and he's being led by Manuel. David Benavides take us behind the three keys to victory for Eduardo Ramirez. You know, Ramirez needs to keep that distance. He doesn't want to rush into anything and get caught, you know, coming in. Also, when he gets on the inside, he needs to apply the pressure, you know. He's going to have to throw more than one shot to land. And then also, you know, work his body, work uh, part of the element of his body, you know, and uh, wear him down for the later rounds. You can already see that. Montiel wants Ramirez to press his jab and keep his hands up. For Ramirez, five of his seven career knockouts have been inside the first round. And Ramirez, when we asked him about why the lack of power that he's been able to display goes, the reality is knockouts come. I'm focused on winning fights, and that is why I have an undefeated record. Yeah, that's one of the rules going into a fight is, you know, never try to force a knockout. You know, you let it come. 
and with your exchanges, you know, nice and relaxed, landed right on the button. Most of the time, when you have a devastating knockout, it feels like you hardly even hit the guy. It's more than the finesse, as both you, Robert, and you, David, have demonstrated during the course of your careers. Yeah, you know, you kind of, you really have to stay imposed in the ring, you have to stay relaxed. You know, you never, a, for, a knockout comes on its own. If it's forced, then it won't come out good, but when a good knockout comes on its own, you just have to set everything up and right, you know, let all the pieces fall in place. Trevor Mar Bartholomew, he's back jabbing. Ramirez is trying to get into that jab and put that pressure and trying to keep, keep him right on the inside. It looks like he's having some success with that pressure inside. You know, maybe uh, he feels like Bartholomew's punch isn't that really, really that bad, so he, he's going in there, he's putting a lot of pressure in right now. This is becoming more of a rough and tumble affair. Both fighters are southpaw. They lead with their right leg. Bartholomew is looking to gain leverage on punches, but closing the distance has been Ramirez. Robert, he's done a very good job of that here in the second round and also in the third. Yeah, he's smothering his distance because Bartholomew is throwing a nice jab and keeping him at bay and landing big shots. So he's trying to smother that jab and get on the inside and land those overhands to the top because of how his height. And that's exactly what type of fight he needs to fight to win this fight. Because if he stays outside, he's going to get attacked all day long with, the, with Bartholomew's punches. So right now, the best option for him is go inside and pressure him. Well, it's no secret that Leduan Bartholomew can pick apart Eduardo Ramirez from the outside. That is typical of Cuban fighters in terms of they use their pure boxing ability to remain on the outside because of their extensive amateur backgrounds. Ramirez is having to have and fight a dogfight. Even though he likes to box, he realizes he's got to smother Bartholomew and make it more of a dogfight, quote unquote, in order to be successful. Yeah, and that's what he's doing. He came out good this round. He's putting pressure on him that jab. And he's coming in with a lot of overhands and body shots. So, you know, it's being effective right now, and he just needs to stay on it, punch a little more when he gets in there. And you know, this is exactly what type of fights, this is exactly what type of fight I think when I think Cuba versus Mexico. You know, the Cuban fighter boxing and the Mexican fighter applying all the pressure. He's getting hit with a few shots. Yeah, but that only needs to be at range. Stop He's holding. That jab. And that concludes the third round. With more on our main event, here is our own Jordan Hardy. Great, thank you so much. I was just speaking with Laduan's older brother, Rancis, and Rancis was telling me that he thinks that Laduan is doing a good job of keeping his distance, but he would like to see him use his feints more, go to the body, and he said he needs to use the double jab. He said the double jab will help him win the fight and set up his shots. Ray, back to you. Thank you very much, Jordan, Robert, and David. What do you think about the what we're hearing out of Rancis Bartholomew, the two-division world champion, about what his brother should do? You know, I feel like he's exactly right. You know, exactly what he says, what exactly we asked him to do fight. And here is how you guys have the fight scored on your unofficial scorecards. 29-28 in favor of Leduan Bartholomew. And incidentally, Leduan Bartholomew, who is under Ismail Salas, used to be trained by Todd Harlib. Todd Harlib was in his corner. Todd Harlib, who was a wonderful cut man and was a part of many, uh, in the careers of many young fighters, passed away uh, last year. And still the memory of Todd lives on. And I know he's smiling down watching Leduan Bartholomew fight Eduardo Ramirez here. And this is actually Todd's hometown of Las Vegas. What Bartholomew needs to do is go back to the jab. That's why, um, you know, Ramirez has been able to get in so easy because Bartholomew's not throwing that jab to stop him. You yeah, know? He, he needs to throw that stiff jab. The way he came out yeah. the first round, throwing a nice stiff jab and then landing body shots and combinations off of that. Yeah, because if he doesn't throw a jab, Ramirez is going to go in there all day long. But so, you know, Bartholomew needs to keep that distance and, and you know, get that jab going on. He's getting a, little, getting a little bit too cocky right now, too, so he needs to be careful. Ramirez, it's non-stop pressure. Ramirez fighting for the first time here in the United States, trying to 
make an indelible statement on the fans here with PBC on FS1. Ramirez is doing a great job working his jab also, getting on the inside, putting that pressure behind his jab. That's why he's able to set stuff up. And it's giving, a, it's giving Bartholomew a lot of trouble. Bartholomew sticks off that jab that snaps the head back of Ramirez. You know, and right now, he was doing a, he was doing a really good job cutting the ring off. You know, he's keeping uh, Bartholomew within the ropes. So I did feel like that's a little bit, he needs to do a little bit more, just apply a little bit more pressure. What is the old saying, guys, that pressure bursts pipes? Ramirez is trying to use his pressure to burst and look at a straight left that backs up Bartholomew. Oh my goodness. That pressure is time to bust those pipes. in a battle here. There is so much and now chance of Cuba here in Las Vegas. Another right hook upstairs by Ramirez and chance of Mexico. It's almost like it is almost a suck-like atmosphere here at the Cannery Hotel and Casino. Oh, Bartholomew needs to be a little bit careful because he's getting he's giving Ramirez a little bit too much confidence. If he stays at this level of confidence, you know he's just gonna overtake Bartholomew. And Bartholomew, Bartholomew is back is straight up and he just got caught with a straight left hand on the chin. He figured him out. He's got to put pressure through a lot of punches, and it's giving him trouble. Then with Bartholomew, he needs room, and he needs time to land his shots. He's used to being the guy that dictates the fight. Now he got Ramirez dictating everything, pushing the pressure, giving him the pressure, landing shots over the top, coming to the body, where it's really uh, effective, and, and it's giving him a lot of trouble. Ramirez is closing the distance. Bartholomew has eaten some heavy straight left hands in this fourth round. We have an action back here in Las Vegas. And so far, we've had a terrific night here at the Cannery Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Leon Bartholomew being attended to by Ismael Salas and Eduardo Ramirez. Manuel Montier, they have got to be very happy with what they've seen Oh yeah, they found out what was giving him trouble was that pressure. And you see him came out right away. Working that jab. A lot of times when you're a shorter fighter, if you have a good jab, it's effective. Especially how Bartholomew has stopped using his jab and, ha and not a stiff jab. You know, what I feel like Bartholomew has to do, you know, is box a little bit more. Not just stay in the same place, but you know, just go around the ring so he confuses uh, Ramirez a little bit because he's staying a little bit too stiff and that's what's allowing Ramirez to come in and put, on, put in all that pressure. David, could it be a fact that Laduan is fighting here in his adopted hometown of Las Vegas? His brother is there, his fans are out here, that he feels like his manhood is being tested, therefore he has to go ahead and showcase and fight somewhere in a style that he's not used to fighting and that is on the inside to try to prove a point. You know, that could be a case, you know, having all these fans, all your people around your brother, you know, you want to impress everybody so you want to you want to kind of slug it out. But you know, if that, I feel like that's not the best fight for Bartholomew. He needs a box, he needs to get his composure, he needs a jab and start boxing with the in the first one. Yeah, what happens is when you fight to the crowd, a lot of times your game plan gets thrown out. And uh, you know, with the pressure that Ramirez is putting, you know, he's, he's getting out of his game plan. The way he started the fight, he needs to get back into that. Dueling chance of Cuba in Mexico. You have to love that the nationalistic pride is being exemplified here in Las Vegas as the Cubans are supporting Bartholomew. The Mexican fan base is clearly in the corner of Ramirez. Oh yeah, that's a great one. The crowd's live and the fight's great. And Ramirez continues to use his jab, but Bartholomew should be more active with that stiff jab. He was successful in the first two rounds with it. You know, and I, right now I feel like his jab's not working so good because he's throwing it at the same speed. You know, he's not just, you know, maybe just throw two a little bit slow and then come back fast with another one. You know, Ramirez, time, he's timed all his jabs, and now he's, uh, he's not really worried about his jabs anymore. He has to change it up. Also, he's not throwing anything behind that jab also. Yeah, he's just trying to throw in the jab, leaving it out there. He needs to set it up or something. This is why you spend the hours and the weeks in training camp sparring and putting yourself in precarious positions for moments like this where you must dig deep. Oh yes, you want to get a variety of different types of sparring. Guys that can put pressure, guys that can box, guys that can box 
and put pressure because you've got to be able to change up the game plan in any time of the fight. So, um, you know, and that's that's what Ramirez did. He changed up his game plan. He started working behind the jab, putting more pressure. At first he came out, he was boxing, and uh, it didn't work for him. So now he's putting that pressure, working behind the jab, and it's really being effective for him. Right hook to punctuate the fifth round. We are midway through this matchup. He actually spent some time with Jorge Linares. He actually sparred with Linares, who is a pressure fighter and a quality fighter, a lucky world champion. And he said he learned quite a bit working with Linares, and he has to go back to that. And also with what his brother Rancis was telling him. Yeah, Linares has really quick hands, great boxing skills. Um, you learn a lot being in, in the ring with somebody like that. And David, you are no stranger to being in the ring with former world champions as well. It's the old mindset that iron sharpens iron. Yeah, you know, when you're in there working with a great champion, especially in sparring, you know, it gives you that motivation and that push, you know, especially if you want to be a champion like them. So, you know, it's definitely, mo it's definitely really motivating to work with great champions. And Bartholomew coming out more assertive here in the sixth round. He landed a straight left that caught the attention of Ramirez. Bartholomew sitting down on his punches more compared to that of what we've seen over the past few rounds. But Ramirez answers back with the right hook of his own, backing up Bartholomew. Yeah, Ramirez is landing a lot of great shots. As soon as uh, Bartholomew throws his punches, he keeps his hands down and he stays there. So he's pretty much being a sitting duck and he's getting shot after shot right to the head. Two right hooks that found their mark for Ramirez. Bartholomew is backing straight up with his head held high and Ramirez is tagging him. You know, Ramirez, he might not have that much power because Shots. You know, he's fighting the exact fight that he has to fight to win this. And it isn't wild aggression. It is cold, calculated, sustained pressure by You. you know, all it takes one or two good shots, especially one in a combination that you don't see can really hurt you. You know, and Ramirez is being really relaxed. That's why he's landing so much power, so much punches, because he's not putting so much into just one punch. He's putting them into all the punches and throws. So he knows what he's doing. That's why he's landing. He's having, having so much success right now. A straight left that caught the chin of Rancis Bartholomew, or Ledwan Bartholomew, I beg your pardon. Rancis is sitting ringside, sure not happy with what he is seeing out of his 28-year-old brother. And back there you see Rancis who's standing clearly disappointed, and you know he's concerned for his brother. You know, and his trainer should be really, really angry at him. So when he goes back to the when he goes back to the corner, he should have a lot to tell him because he's going to fight. to exclaim, stay on your bicycle and remain on the outside. Eduardo Ramirez, the 24-year-old, has closed the distance starting from round three on. Yeah, he's doing it behind a nice jab also. If you notice, he's he's jabbing with Bartholomew, Stop. which right after that, he either throws an overhand right, I mean overhand left, and lands his combination after that. You guys have this fight dead even. Robert Guerrero and David Benavides. So much on the line in this match. It potentially fights down the line with the WBC champion, Gary Russell Jr. You have Leo Santa Cruz and Abner Mades. You have Lightning Lee Selby, Carl Frampton. There are so many names out there that any one of these guys can, can propel themselves into the top 15 rankings. Yes, the division is stacked. A lot of talent there. And, you know, this is where, this is where it starts. A right hook that connected by Bartholomew, and Bartholomew is trying to reassert himself in the fight. And that's 
that's exactly what he has to do as he has to do. As soon as Ramirez comes in, he has to take that step back and counter him. You know, just dance around the ring. You know, but at least, uh, throw some shots as well, you know, get that jab started again. And also, Robert Bartholomew needs to use head movement because he's keeping his head in the same stationary movement, which is why Ramirez has been able to connect with his big power shots. Yes, he needs to turn them just like he did now. Keep turning them and keep turning them and landing your shots, getting that distance to get off. What he's doing, he's playing straight back, and Ramirez is landing that shot, that hook, or that overhand. Now, Bartholomew is going back to trying to keep his foot of boxing and remain on the outside right hook to the body. 65 seconds left in the seventh. You know, I, I also see a lead straight hand, a straight left hand being a weapon for Bartholomew. It's just that he has to have a little bit of confidence and throw it. You know, just stand up there and throw it and get out there. at all. He, he keeps applying that pressure every round. Yeah, he hasn't figured out. He knows as soon as he puts pressure, cuts that ring on him, behind that jab, he's going to land big shots, especially if you're pulling straight back. Under 30 seconds left in the seventh. He's going to land something. He knows there's not a lot of fire coming back at him. And back comes the Ramirez, but Bartholomew remains on the outside trying to box. And a jab that caught Bartholomew. And Jane Andy wisely will let them, he let them fight out of the break momentarily, but then he separates them. Final minute of the eighth round. Bartholomew has looked very good boxing on the outside. Ramirez has had his sustained pressure, but in pockets. Ramirez needs to stop following him and cut the ring a lot more. That's why uh, Bartholomew is able to land shots on him while he's turning him and moving. You got Ramirez who's just walking straight in. And that it's not a good thing because you run into shots like the way he is. Francis Bartholomew, or Ledwan Bartholomew, is fighting the type of round that he wants at his pace and his tempo. Yeah, you know, I feel like he needs to set up a little bit more punches. You know, go down to the body, break, break Ramirez down a little bit. He's did, he's, uh, he's, he's done good fighting this type of fight, but now he needs to step on the gas a little bit more because he gave too much rounds away. 
And it's the eighth round. We have two more coming up. You're watching BBC on FS1. Welcome back to BBC on FS1. Our very own Jordan Hardy is standing by with news on the Eduardo Ramirez corner. Ray, thank you. I'm over here in Ramirez corner, and his trainer is telling him that Barthelme is tired and getting lazy. So come forward and let your hands go and have backup defense on the way out just, just to prevent any counters. But you guys, remember, he told us he's here to win and to put Mexico on the map. And boy, is he displaying that tonight. Ray, back to you. Thank you very much, Jordan. Well, the notion of being coming forward, throwing your combinations, he has been exemplifying that in this fight. Yeah, he's doing a great job doing it, but he just needs to cut the ring a little more and not follow. David Ledwan Bartholomew goes back to fighting on the outside. You know, it's good for him. You know, I, if I was him, I would wait for uh, Ramirez to come in, and then that's when you make, you know, you, you, you throw your shots. You know, I see that straight left hand, a good weapon for him, but he's just not letting it go. Yeah, what Bartholomew's doing good is he's turning him. He's not going straight back like he was earlier in the fight. And that's when he was getting caught with a lot of shots when he was turn when he was going straight back. Now he's sidestepping and turning, so he's giving different angles to land those shots. And Lamidas swung and missed. Ledwan Bartholomew, your nickname is El Problema, which means the problem. He has been a problem in these couple rounds for Eduardo Ramirez, and also in the first couple rounds. You know, and this fight really is gonna is really is gonna come down to who wants it more. You know, there's two rounds left. Gonna, you're gonna see the will and heart of both these fighters. Well, we will go and look at your gentlemen's scorecards at the end of this round, but it appears as though Edwin won the first couple rounds and Amidas took the middle rounds, and Edwin is taking control, but Amidas stalking Edwin Bartholomew. I think it's gonna come down to conditioning. Who's in better condition? Because they both look a little tired. But Bellamy's throwing a nice jab and keeping him at bay and turning him, which, oh, just got caught with a nice overhand. 65 seconds remaining in the ninth round. Chance of Cuba and Mexico here at the Cannery Hotel and Casino, 50 miles north of the famed Las Vegas Strip. You know, and it's really kind of hard to score these last rounds because Bartholomew starts really good, and then Ramirez starts to put his pressure. And then, um, you know, it just goes back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, it's going to be a really hard round to, to score. Yeah, last couple of rounds been really close. It is a war of attrition between Ledwan Bartholomew and Eduardo Ramirez. Now, Ramirez, theoretically, one of the two fighters can maybe steal the round if they are successful. You know, all it takes for Ramirez to steal the round is a big flurry, so if I, was, if I was him, I would try to throw a big flurry and steal these last 10 seconds. A right hook that connected for Bartholomew towards the tail end of the ninth round. We have one more to go between Juan Bartholomew and Eduardo Ramirez. This is how David Benavides have the fight scored. 86-85, one point advantage for the Bartholomew. The fight could theoretically hang in the balance. The 10th and final round here from Las Vegas. Both fighters are undefeated. Bartholomew 13-0 with seven knockouts. Ramirez, 20 wins, no losses, two draws with seven knockouts, two against Razame. This is where their hearts pour out. Nationalistic pride, undefeated pride on the line as both fighters in the ultra-talented featherweight division. And both these fighters know that whoever wins this round wins the fight. So they're both, they're both, you know, have their foot on the gas, you know, they want to leave it all out right here. The stakes are high here in Las Vegas between Bartholomew and Ramirez. And a shot after the break, Jay Nady admonishing Ramirez for that shot. Yeah, they're both going for it hard. Stop. Now Bartholomew appears to be imploring a double jab and sort of clutch attitude. 
to try to fight his pace. Yeah, his, his Bartholomew coming in, coming forward, kind of changed, uh, kind of changed up. Right hook that smack Ramirez by Bartholomew. And it could be a sign that Bartholomew is tired of shot behind the head because it is Bartholomew who is looking to swarm and impede the forward progression of Ramirez. Oh, yeah, he's, he's very fatigued right now. You know, he's trying to land a big shot. He's looking for a big one to land in there. Just letting, letting the shots go. David, could it be a sign that Bartholomew is tired and he realizes he's got to do whatever it takes to bring an end and get this round? You know, both these guys want to win this fight, and you know, they feel like they need this round badly to win. That's why they're both kind of stepping on, on it right now. You know, but Ramirez is coming back. Bartholomew will have won the first half, in my opinion. Now Ramirez is coming back. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone 10 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, Patricia Morris Jarman scores the bout 97 to 93 for Bartholomew. Judge Glenn Trowbridge scores the bout 96 to 94 for Ramirez. And Judge Tim Cheatham scores the bout 95 to 95. This bout has been declared a draw. So a draw between Ledwan Bartholomew and Eduardo Ramirez. But it was a justified decision.